Disney is a major media company that's creating programs for essentially every entertainment medium. With so many different projects happening simultaneously, it's inevitable that a few end unexpectedly because of unusual causes. These are 10 Disney shows that were canceled for weird reasons. If you were a kid in the 90s, chances are you saw at least a dozen episodes of the show Boy Meets World. This sitcom aimed at younger audiences followed Corey Matthews as he went from middle school to high school and then to college. Along the way, he and those close to him learned countless life lessons and grew as people. Boy Meets World was massively popular and is more or less regarded as a staple of the 1990s today. It originally aired on ABC, but became a Disney show when the House of Mouse bought the network back in 1996. In 2014, Disney would launch a spin-off of Boy Meets World titled Girl Meets World on the Disney Channel, which would focus on the daughter of the now adult Boy Meets World main characters, Cory and Topanga. Girl Meets World was canceled for a pretty normal reason. It just didn't draw a significant amount of viewership. However, what's strange is that it wasn't a runaway success. Boy Meets World was a cultural touchstone to people who grew up in the 90s, and Girl Meets World only needed a fraction of that viewership to be a hit. In the end though, it looks like nostalgia wasn't enough to elevate this sitcom above its peers, and instead it joins a number of poorly conceived spin-offs that just didn't work. The core concept of Sabrina the Animated Series is pretty weird. The reason for its cancellation is just as strange. Sabrina the Animated Series is a spin-off of the live-action show Sabrina the Teenage Witch. However, the animated series actually has more in common with the Archie comic than the live-action show it was based on. Furthermore, the animated series directly contradicts a lot of the lore that was established in the live-action show. So it may not be as strange as the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina Netflix show, honestly it's hard to top satanic worship, but it's still pretty odd. The reason for the show's cancellation is also rather peculiar. The animated show only ran for a single season from 1999 to 2000. Although that single season did consist of 65 22 minute episodes, which is a pretty staggering number. Dick Entertainment was the animation studio behind the show and were rather notorious for creating shows with poor animation quickly and cheaply. The reason Sabrina the Animated Series ended though was because Disney ended their work relationship with Dick shortly after the turn of the millennium. Dick would try to spin off the Animated Series into other projects, but none would really take off. This would play a part in the animation and licensing company, eventually going defunct in 2008. Brandy and Mr. Whiskers was an odd cartoon by Disney Channel standards. More in line with Hanna-Barbera's style of animation and humor than the Disney traditional animation, it never quite rose to top tier popularity on the channel. However, it did feel like a breath of fresh air on the network when it was airing between 2004 and 2006. Centering on a socialite dog, Brandy, and a zany rabbit, Mr. Whiskers, who gets stuck in the Amazon rainforest, the show was pretty bonkers. For instance, there's an entire overarching storyline of Brandy introducing the concept of currency to the rainforest animals and all the problems that that causes. The show also had some bigger names in the television and voice acting community, including Kaylee Kuoko, Charlie Adler, Tom Kenny, and Jennifer Hale. The show was canceled for the common, but no less head-scratching reason that a lot of Disney cartoons are pulled. Disney television animation doesn't usually create more than two or three seasons of any given cartoon. The world of television cartoons is pretty competitive, and unless something is a breakout success, it's not usually worth it for animation studios to keep churning out new episodes. Brandy and Mr. Whiskers was a good cartoon, and it put up some decent numbers, which meant that Disney was never going to keep it going for very long. Buzz Lightyear of Star Command is a pretty strange cartoon that aired from the year 2000 to 2001. It's essentially a fleshed out version of the show that would have popularized the Buzz Lightyear toy in the Toy Story universe. So basically, it's an actual version of a fictional show that only exists as a way to cash in on the success of a movie that featured the fictional show. It also somehow gets weirder than this. Buzz Lightyear of Star Command largely focused on Buzz and his crew going on space adventures and foiling the plots of the villain 
known as Zerg. Its cast is also pretty star-studded and features voice acting from the likes of Neil Flynn, Nicole Sullivan, Wayne Knight, and Frank Welker. Most bizarrely, Patrick Warburton does the voice of Buzz Lightyear in this series instead of Tim Allen, who voices the character in the Toy Story films. This was probably done because Tim Allen would have been too expensive to do the voice in the show, which is strange since Warburton is arguably more successful than Allen is today. This show was also cancelled because of Disney Television Animation's two-season rule for cartoons. However, it remains one of the more interesting ways that a show tied into a popular film to cash in on the movie's success. Cory in the House was far more successful as a meme than it ever was as a television show. A spin-off of the wildly successful show That's So Raven, the show had a premise that jumped the shark and several plot lines that did the same. Raven's younger brother Cory Baxter and her father Victor moved to Washington DC so he can become the president's personal chef. However, Cory's many money-making schemes quickly land him in hot water with those close to the president and the president's young daughter. The show was pretty ridiculous, not that great, and is largely remembered today in an almost mocking way. It is pretty bizarre though that it managed to have such a cultural impact despite only consisting of two seasons. There isn't much of a consensus on why Cory in the House was cancelled specifically. Disney didn't give much of a reason. Although it was probably a combination of actors aging out of the ability to play teenagers and lower than expected ratings. So while it's fair to say that the cancellation of the underperforming spinoff is pretty typical, its ongoing cultural impact remains very unusual. Lizzie McGuire was nothing short of the biggest show on Disney in the early 2000s. The first season was a smash hit. The Lizzie McGuire movie made triple its budget in the box office, and the show's second season earned the same amount of acclaim. The show was on track to start an empire and jumpstart the career of all involved in the program. Then it just kind of went away. The reason behind Lizzie McGuire's cancellation is a tale as old as time in Hollywood, but still surprising considering how much all involved had to gain. Hilary Duff, the actress portraying the titular Lizzie McGuire, was a young teenager when the show premiered and was largely represented by her parents in business situations. As Duff's contract started to draw to a close, her parents held out for more money, believing their daughter deserved more for her work. They weren't able to reach an agreement though, and the two parties separated on less than friendly terms. It's pretty telling since the actress hasn't appeared in any projects directly under the Disney label since leaving the Lizzie McGuire role. This cancellation feels like a missed opportunity for all involved and is only compounded by the worries that surrounded most situations involving child actors. Namely, that those representing Duff may have been more concerned about their own interests, but we'll never know for sure. American Dragon Jake Long is another Disney cartoon that fell victim to the in-house animation studio's policy of dropping shows after a few seasons. Only, it also had a bit of a bumpier ride in getting to that ending. The show largely focused on Asian American Jake Long who transforms into a dragon to battle various supernatural forces of evil. Taking place in Manhattan, Long struggles to balance his social obligations and school life with these supernatural responsibilities. Strangely, the show's art style changed dramatically between its first and second season. It jumped from being bubbly and cartoonish to simpler and more anime inspired between the seasons, a change that doubtlessly confused young viewers. The reason for this visual change also isn't very clear. Some rumors state that a new writing team changed the art to match the show's new direction, while others believe that the simpler art style resulted from a more limited budget. Either way, the show was cancelled after its second season. It's possible that the art change hindered the show's brand recognition and chance at a more substantial popularity, but it's impossible to know for sure. One of the many darker 90s animated shows to become cult classics. It centers on a group of gargoyles that awaken in New York City and become entangled in a variety of supernatural plots. Sadly though, it would be cancelled because efforts to increase its popularity would only hinder its previous success. While Gargoyles certainly was a successful cartoon, it didn't live up to Disney's expectations. The House of Mouse wanted a show that would rival Warner Brothers Batman the Animated Series. That's a big part of why Gargoyles has a pretty similar tone to the critically acclaimed Batman cartoon. 
However, Gargoyles could never reach the same level of viewership and praise as Batman. After two seasons of falling short, Disney would cancel the show, but ABC picked it up for a third season, which is kind of ironic as Disney would acquire ABC in the same year that the third season aired, 1996. The third season of Gargoyles went in a new direction with a new team of writers, but it couldn't even live up to the show's previous numbers. All in all, Gargoyles would be remembered as a terrific cartoon that could never quite rise above the many exceptional animated programs of the 90s. Dave the Barbarian is another weird Disney Channel cartoon to appear in the early to mid 2000s. It centers on a cowardly barbarian and his family battling the forces of evil, in a world that's equally packed with magic as it is with fourth wall breaking jokes. It's a pretty strange program, and it stood out from a lot of its contemporaries because of those elements. Although it was a pretty niche show, it would go on to win an Annie Award for storyboarding. The cartoon also isn't afraid to embrace the fact that it's a television show, lean into jokes and situations granted by the medium. Sadly though, the cartoon would only run for a single season, consisting of 21 episodes. The show proved just a bit too oddball to generate solid numbers with viewers and was cancelled. Which is kind of a bummer. It sucks that a genuinely unique and creative show wasn't able to have more time in the limelight. Most shows today fail because they play it too safe, and they can't carve out a sustainable viewership. Dave the Barbarian went too far the other way and had such a specific sense of humor that it just didn't click with enough people to satisfy a second season. That's right, Kim Possible, one of the most successful and recognized cartoons in history, was at one point canceled. The first cartoon created by Walt Disney Television Animation, the show proved to be one of the biggest cartoons of the 2000s. Originally, the show was supposed to end after the release of the 2005 movie, Kim Possible, So the Drama, but then Disney surprised viewers. The network announced a fourth season to the show after seeing how invested fans still were in the series. You can look at this as Disney catering to fans or, more cynically, trying to milk more money out of the franchise. But fans' love of the show brought it back from cancellation. If you were a kid in the 2000s, there was no escaping just how popular and widespread the Kim Possible cartoon actually was. At least one kid in every class had a Kim Possible backpack, and the naked mole rap was played at every social event for kids. With the cartoon occupying so much real estate in people's childhoods, it's no surprise that it got a live action movie earlier this year and is set to appear on the Disney Plus streaming service. Unlike every other show in this video, it's incredibly strange that Kim Possible was ever cancelled in the first place. What other Disney shows were canned for weird reasons? Please let us know in the comments section down below and be sure to like this video and subscribe to The Binger. Also, remember to click that bell icon so you can get a notification whenever our latest videos go live.